Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, we began um, looking into something yesterday. We are still on the topic. We've been talking about the wisdom of God's word. So I began to, began to bring a perspective yesterday and that's the things we're going to continue today talking about. But before going to today's broadcast, are you ready for your daily bread? Let's release our faith right now. Join me and say this, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. We bless you, Lord, for your wisdom that will be displayed today. And everyone listening to me right now, their understanding is opened in Jesus' mighty name. I declare yokes are being destroyed and burdens are being lifted right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Now then, I was sharing with you yesterday the reason Jesus said salvation is for the Jews. Jesus actually made that statement. That salvation if is of the Jews. And I was telling you yesterday that what that statement means is not that only Jews will be saved or only a Jewish man can bring you salvation. No, it, it doesn't even mean that because Jesus physically was a Jewish man, so salvation is going to come from the Jews. No, that's not what it means. What that statement meant, Jesus made that statement to the woman by the well. It means that if you need to understand salvation, you need to look at the Jews, their history. That's what Jesus was talking about. You need to look at their history. And why did he say we have to look at their history? I explained that to you yesterday because their, the Jewish history began with God. Now that's one clear, you know, someone say, whose history did not begin with God? Hold on, just understand what I'm talking to you about today. Now, that's the one clear tribe or um, people that their history was properly documented. Now, that's the gift of God. That's, that's something God did for them. Their history was not just documented. It was popular. The, the history had been made popular. And from several checks, people have come to realize that this history is true so the bible have the record of jewish history and it's not a make-believe thing see now several tribes several people have their uh, have their own history also of course everybody have their history but then i don't think any tribe was able to document their history properly and document it from the standpoint of god and that's the difference between the Jewish people. They were able to document their history, not just the physical aspect, because their history could have just simply mean Abraham had problem with, with his hometown, and then he, he carried his wife and his nephew, and then they left to another place, and they settled there. And when they were settled, they started doing business and doing transactions, and different things began to happen. Along the line, he, he had sex with, with his maid and she gave birth to another child and then later on his wife that has been barren she just became pregnant nobody knew how and that's how he had another son and then he sent you know it could have just been from that standpoint but there is something unique about the bible and the way it was recorded now this is where you need to pay close attention because you've heard me say the Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of God. Now that's why the Bible is different. It contains the stories of people who received the word of God. Now good enough, the Bible didn't start telling us about Abraham alone. No, the Bible told us from the beginning how man was created and how, how the earth began to multiply and things that happened even before Abraham. But we brought in Abraham's talk 
because of the statement Jesus made that salvation is of the Jews. Okay, because Adam was not a Jewish man. Get that right. Adam was not a Jewish man. But then you see how he, he multiplied the earth and like God told them, fill up the earth. And then they, they lived their lives and um, all these things began to happen. Praise God. So Abraham was one man that received the word of the Lord. The Bible in Genesis 12 told us how God spoke to Abraham and said, leave your father's house to a land that I will show you. So he left and came to a place called Canaan. And when he got there, different things, the way they established their culture was by the word of the Lord. So they have the culture of circumcision. The culture of circumcision is not something that they sat down as a people and said, let us do this to have our own identity. No, God actually commanded Abraham to circumcise every male. Notice, he says, circumcise every male. And Abraham obeyed God and that's how circumcision came about with the Jewish people. So the question then is, why did God tell Abraham to circumcise every male in his house? Now, studying the scriptures, you will know that number one is for identity. Number two, because God made it a law to Abraham. says, any male child that is born in your house from henceforth, once they turn eight days old, they must be circumcised. Once they are eight, they must be circumcised. Now, God commanded that instruction. Okay? And that was a covenant that God caught with Abraham. And that covenant itself brings security and protection to the house of Abraham and to the Jewish people generally. Now, that's the reason you find David later on when he went to challenge Goliath, what did he say? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Now, the moment he recognized that this guy is not circumcised, he was invoking, talking about David now, he was invoking a covenant in that battle. He was bringing God into that battle. He said, look, we are circumcised for this reason. We injured ourselves for this reason because we believe in God. So the God that we believe in is the one who will stand with us in this battle and give us the victory. Now that's all he was saying. So when he say he was invoking the power of the covenant. Why? Because the covenant began in God. The Jewish, that's why the Jewish would take circumcision so important. From generation to generation, they have kept that command. Now, someone else who is not from their tribe, I want you to follow me now. We look at it and be wondering, what is it? Why are they damaging themselves? Why are they cutting their foreskin off? Look at what you're doing to a child. You know, now you want to be a child rights activist. So you say, this is wrong. You can't even ask the child if the child should uh, be circumcised or not because the child cannot make decisions. So why don't you wait until the child is grown, becomes an adult and can take decisions for us before you now ask the child, do you want to be circumcised or not? Hey, God commanded them that this must be so. Now, if you study their history, in, in, uh, in, in the book of Exodus, I think Exodus chapter 3 or so, when Moses, God called Moses and was sending him to Egypt to go and free the people. Now the Bible said he got to an inn, Moses and his, his wife and his son got to an inn and then the Bible says God wanted to kill him. Now actually God wanted to kill his son. Now why would God kill his son? Moses and his wife knew, Zipporah, his wife, knew that it was because of the circumcision. Now, history has it that when, of course, Moses was circumcised himself, you remember, because he was born a Hebrew child. He was hidden for three months 
he was hidden for three months and the law is that you must circumcise the child by eight days okay so they hid him for three months and the moment pharaoh's daughter saw him say oh this must be one of the hebrew um, children okay so moses was circumcised now he got out of egypt married from the midianites um, the the daughter of a midianite and he couldn't get them to accept because his first son was born there he couldn't get them to accept the plan of the circumcision follow me and so his son was not circumcised i believe moses had brought it up that look we have a covenant with god i'm a hebrew man we have to circumcise and then possibly why i said not my son do you want to kill my son <laughs> you understand because because the, the circumcision thing had become an act of faith it's a tradition but still an act of faith and then her parents are like oh no 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 you can't try that you can't try that that's moses in-laws now you can't try that now when they left and the wife saw that she's going to lose her child she quickly took a sharp stone and circumcised the boy herself see now that's to tell you that now it's not moses that said this child is not circumcised so i want to kill this child no an angel showed up and was going to kill him question then is why would an angel want to kill him because he was not circumcised now that's to tell you the importance god attached to circumcision i'll give you another example and i think this one will get you or this one would, would, would make you think we're talking about the traditions the jewish people see and why jesus said look at the jewish people you will understand salvation remember we're talking about the wisdom of god's word okay now there was a flood noah's flood and after the flood noah gave god a sacrifice and god made a covenant with noah i want you to listen god made a covenant with noah and in that covenant god said something he says look i will no longer destroy the earth like i have done and god said this is what we are going to do now this is god this is what we're going to do i'm going to set up a system in the heavens that whenever i get offended by the earth and by that offense i want to bring a flood on the earth the water will begin to rise now when this water i think i should read this to you so it doesn't look like i'm just talking genesis genesis chapter 9 verse 12 Okay, let me start from verse 11. Genesis chapter 9 and verse 11. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood, neither shall there be any more, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the token. Follow me now. Every covenant has a token. This is a token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. Take note of that statement. He said, I'm making this covenant with you for perpetual generations. That I am not going to destroy the earth with a flood like I have just done. It will never happen again. And God didn't just stop there. He says, look, this is going to be the token of that covenant for perpetual generation. Okay. I, verse 13 now, I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. The covenant now is between God and who? The earth. Hmm. Verse 14, and it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. Now, why is he bringing a cloud over the earth? To bring forth rain. 
When I bring a cloud over the earth, the bowl shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. Did you see that? So God said, when I bring a cloud over the earth, of course, like I said, to bring water, then the bow will appear with the cloud. And when I see the bow, I will not allow the water to destroy the earth. Watch that now. And verse 16. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. Now, no human being controls the appearance of the bow. No human being. That's what we call the rainbow. No human being controls the appearance of the rainbow. Follow me now. Now, this is the origin of the rainbow. Before this time, there was no, no phenomenon like rainbow. This is the origin of it. God made a covenant with man and the rainbow became the token of the covenant. Now listen, today, Jesus have come, he's dead, he rose from the dead, and he's gone, and he's seated in the right hand of the Father, like we believe. And he died for every man. Now by the death of Jesus, God legally shouldn't have... Um, shouldn't destroy the whole earth again because the blood of Jesus have atoned or the blood of Jesus represents the sin of the whole world, right? Yeah. God is the one that established the token of the bow covenant, the rainbow covenant. Till this day, we still have the rainbow coming up whenever it becomes cloudy, the rainbow shows now that should tell you something if the blood of jesus christ cancelled the rainbow covenant because it was a better sacrifice god should have stopped the rainbow from showing up because there's no need for the rainbow anymore right but till this day we see the rainbow now, whenever we see the rainbow, what does that represent? It represents a flooding that have just been stopped. Yeah. The rainbow represents a flooding that have just been stopped. Now, understand this. God still sees the rainbow. Because remember what he said to Noah, I will see the bow and I will restrain myself. God still sees the bow. He still sees the rainbow. Till this day when it comes out. And he has not thought about it and said, Hey, there's no need for this rainbow anymore. Um, can we just put it out? Because I'm not, I mean, now I see the blood of Jesus. But till this day, God sees the rainbow and he remembers his covenant with Noah. That should tell you something. People who preach this gospel of, oh, um, Jesus have died. We are not supposed to do this again. The one that God himself is doing, he hasn't stopped. Titan is of the Old Testament. We are not supposed to be Titan again. The one that God sent by himself, he has not stopped it. That should make you think. So we want to talk about the wisdom of God's word. That should make you think. And say, hey, we better be careful with certain things that we rush to do. There are ordinances God has set in place. 
And the reason or purpose for the ordinances is that we remember him. Now, in his wisdom, in God's wisdom, he set up these ordinances. And we are supposed to believe in him and trust in his wisdom concerning these ordinances. And so that we live. And my time is up. Praise God. Oh, blessed be the Lord God who brings understanding to us. Father, I pray that your spirit will fill our hearts with understanding. That our way will be perfect towards you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Go have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.